Hey there again folks, welcome to another Train Simulator video. Uh, today we're going to be taking a look at the recently released uh, pack from DTM, third party dev DTM. Um, this is for Train Simulator, I said that right. <laughs> uh, newest pack from him, anyway it's the BL2 and just a, a quick bit of history before we get started because some of you may be looking at this thing thinking what on God's green earth is that? Uh, anyway, it's uh, it's your basic four axle road switcher. Uh, the BL stood for branch line. Very clever, I know. They uh, they built 59 of these overall, I believe, between somewhere in the 40s, I think late 40s. Uh, they didn't build any more after 49, I guess. They didn't go into the 50s. Anyway, uh, it was an important period between basically uh, car bodies. Um, which kind of led to the GP7. For those of you that are familiar with the GP9, the GP7 essentially is that and looks just like that. Um, but it, it it made it a little bit easier for uh, you know train crews to, to be able to see, uh, more importantly, out the back doing uh, reverse moves or you know whatever you want to call it. But uh, it, it also had an EMD 567B and each unit have 1500 horsepower uh, but it you know like I said it was designed to give crews uh, a bit better visibility uh, a few of these remain preserved to this very day um, but essentially it's it's an F3 with a different body so think of it like that it's it's an F3 that looks like it came out of its mama backwards uh, essentially um, Anyway, the Western Maryland Railroad, which these are built for, obviously, as you can see here, had two, 81 and 82. Uh, Florida East Coast, my local railroad, had six of these things in the lovely blue. Uh, CNO had 14, just to name a few railroads that, that grabbed some of these. But uh, the Western Maryland number 82 is preserved to this very day. Uh, and it's at, I think it's in West Virginia, West Virginia Central. It's like a, it's like a heritage railroad. Um, anyway, these were built in response to the Alco RS1 and RS2 because, you know, Alco was, they were kind of doing all right at the time, but it's, you know, it's obvious that EMD won the war eventually, but um, they sold poorly. They had complex car bodies. They were tight as hell trying to get into the engine and all that uh, behind the cab there, uh, and they just... You know they didn't they didn't flush out well. They were expensive to produce, uh, light frame. They didn't weigh very much. Uh, they had to throw like concrete blocks and weights and all kinds of stuff in the nose and pretty much anywhere they can just to get some traction, some pulling power on these suckers. Um, but they were very very light. Anyway, so enough of that. So we got the BL2 here by DTM. You're going to get BL2 and two Western Maryland liveries, which you see here, Fireball and Speed Letter. Fireball being here in front of us, Speed Letter down on the left. You're also going to get his FA2, which is a totally different unit, um, in three liveries. And you're going to get a GE44 Tonner, which is a little swisher as well, as freight, uh, five freight cars and four scenarios for the Hanover subdivision, which we are currently on right now. Uh, I'd also like to note in the manual, um, there's special thanks given to Ricardo Rivera of Repo, Gary Dozal, and Michael Stefan. Alright, let's take a look at these things. I'd also like to note, uh, when these were being built, uh, and he was posting photos on Facebook and all that good stuff, there, there were some indiscrepancies, and you can see that in the manual. I've got the manual over here on the other screen and uh, and it's early phase it, it some of the things weren't correct but he did correct them which you know credit where credit is due that was done. Uh, anyway that some of the the hand grabs and the rails and the ladder and stuff he originally had black they are definitely yellow. Um, not only that but over on the speed letter guy over here the uh, the radio equipped logo decals gone and uh, it had black handrails and uh, letters all around too so so he did fix that you know credit where credits too he listened to feedback and uh, got it corrected so 
These obviously had a 567. Uh, they obviously sound like they've got old F7 engines. Uh, you know, sounds from the game, because there's, what, like 700 F7s in Train Simulator by now? So, um, it's, it's kind of got that sound, it's got that vibe it's giving me right now. We'll go ahead and take a look at the exterior first. The logo looks all right. I mean, it, it it looks it looks fairly sharp. It looks sharper than let's say some of the other stuff, like the uh, the root that I just looked at, um, the mountain sub. Like some of the stock in that had some really bad logos, just really really poor. Looked like it was eight bit or something. Uh, but these do look better. Look, I get, it's lined up there pretty good, I guess. That one's not as clear. The number looks pretty good. The numbers are nice. The headlights are correct. It's got the marker lights as well. Uh, still, still going with the same old air hoses um, as a lot of the DTM stuff and this this foot plate. I wish, this is one of those things that I wish would change, because uh, it's just so noticeable on a lot of this stock, uh, and it just looks very aged. Um, now, another thing with a lot of DTM stuff, is there seem to be issues with uh, couplers and missing textures. Um, I think I've got just about all of DTM's things, barring a few. Uh, but I know they use a lot of the same stuff, as you know, as do a lot of uh, train sim assets and locos and rolling stock. So I, I'm not having uh, a texture issue at the moment. But if, if I were to not own other DTM stock, I don't know, you know, if that would be the case. The, uh, the wheels look a little better than usual, I think. They're, they're less shiny, less glossy. Bit of a rust in there, corrosive. Uh, the body itself is, you know, it's got that, that toned down alpha. It's, it's not too shiny. I mean, you could still kind of see it in there. That stripe right there doesn't connect very well, as you can see by the vents there. Uh, and the weathering down along the bottom is... It's interesting if you look at it, because it's kind of like a patterning. You know, it's like squirt, go over a couple of feet, squirt, go over a couple of feet, squirt. You know, where it seems like in real life it would be in one general area, maybe a big gap. And then in another large general area, and uh, that's that's noticeable on you know a black engine. So the uh, the Western Maryland logo looks all right. It's it's pretty sharp. Uh, and in the line, this is the thing that kind of concerned me because this is such a weird and oddly shaped locomotive. This this striping that we're on these, because as you can see, it's it's curved. It's almost like almost looks like a wheel well on an old car, and so it kind of doesn't match up there. It's not too noticeable, like you can't even tell from here, right? But this part right here. I don't know. I've I've never seen the top of one of these. I've never seen a photo of the top of one of these, so I don't know if that looks like that or not. So if any of you uh, have seen this thing, the one that remains, uh, please do let me know in the comments below. I um, yeah, but I've I've never seen any photos. They've always been like down here, you know, bug angle. But uh, it's. You know, as long as you're down here, it, it looks okay, but from up here, it's it's noticeable. I just, I honestly don't know if it's like that or not. 
Um, the the rest of the slant in the body. It's a good thing this one's very dark colored because you don't notice it as much, and you can kind of see why the BL2 was built. You know, so when they're doing a reverse move, they've got uh, visibility, albeit fairly poor, kind of like a steam engine, but. Uh, you know, better than better than the old uh, E and F bodies. It looks like it's got a uh, EMD F7 trucks, I guess. Um, F3. Yeah, I think we're rolling. <laughs> the uh, the couplers, as always, on a lot of the stuff are just a bit too clean. You know. Um. I do appreciate the fact that the uh, that he went back and, and fixed the uh, the handrails and grab bars and stuff. That's nice. And the uh, the numbering looks pretty good, as well as the logo. I mean, it's not like 8K resolution, but it's uh you know it's not too shabby. And I was noticing these vents as well. Those actually look alright. Those look pretty clean. Very sharp. But, uh, something about it, um, compared to, like, stuff I've seen of, of the, the real ones, you know, old photos are always hard to tell because they're old photos. Cameras were shit back then. You know, the whole works. So, the preserved ones... It's a different story. Uh, they're cleaned up. It, it's easier to see things, but something about the shape on the real one versus this one looks a little bit off, and I I can't pinpoint what it is. I I did notice the the bit right here between the the glass. It would seem uh, in real life, the actual locomotive, that that's a little bit thinner right there, and if it's not. It's because there is a, a definitive crown right there that goes right down the way. It's like uh, angled, if you will. And it's kind of there. But uh, I don't, it's just hard to tell. Could just be because of the, the dark color of the locomotive. Looks like it's got that old single chime Wabco. But uh honestly, like on, on some of the DTM stuff, I I feel like this is some of the better logoing and lettering and numbering that I've seen on some DTM stuff for quite a while. Got the fans and the rads. So you can kind of see the uh, the engine in here. These things, uh there's a pretty well-known video online of, uh, I think it's a banger and a rustic uh, BL2. I think it is. Yeah, anyway. Of a, a guy showing off the interior of this thing, and it's it's cramped AF. So it's kind of neat. You can see the uh, power plant here and where the uh, steps go up to the doors there on both sides. And then there's a little tiny door right here on the back. So anyway, go check that video out um, if you want to see what I'm talking about. All right, so let's hop inside this thing. The uh, the angle seems a little bit off. I don't know. Okay, that's interesting. So, that's why that was built, partially anyway. You can actually see in there. Okay, I was wondering if, like, some kind of trickery was going to happen there. That's interesting. Hey, man. The uh, this this the paint 
and the, the texturing on all the surfaces, the that spotty look. I, I would honestly just rather have it one, you know, in, in, instead of multiple, like, spotty looks here. You know what I mean? Good thing you don't uh, have to have the cab light on most of the time. Alright, turn that back off. Check the windows. Can you open the windows? Oh, wait, wait. Yes, you can. Old school roll down. Very nice. What about the dirt? Yeah. See the uh, big old intakes up in there. God, this thing had to be so loud. See, look how high up the uh, character's sitting right there. The uh, I don't know. The angle seems funny. I've never sat in one of these, so I can't really attest to that. But anywho, um, like the floor and the seat looks all right, genuinely. Just the the control stand and the and the rest of the surfaces just don't look very good. That spottiness. You know, I get it's supposed to be old and weathered and all that, but uh, I think it would have been better off just a, a single color. See how we can fidget with back here. Got the usual uh, DTM looking gauges and whatnot. Don't appear to be much back there. Alright, I'm going to open the manual over here just to make sure I don't miss any controls. Let's see what we got. Alright. Let's see. Headlight. Same old DTM headlight. Not the best. Let's see if there's a... Um... So sometimes I've noticed with these engines, if you just use the shortcut H with DTM's products, uh, it just goes to high. And I don't think high looks that good, but if you can actually find and maneuver the switch yourself uh, and put it on low, it looks a little bit better. Alright, we'll go ahead and pop on the class lights, number boards, headlights. Cab light already did that. Da, 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 da. None of that works. Oh, platform lights. Instrument lights. Check out the wipers. Nothing groundbreaking. Looks looks pretty standard. those headlights back on. It looks like there is just one headlight um, setting. Interesting. Alright, let's try the bell. And the horn. That like millisecond loop that's been used on pretty much anything else with the old Wabco single chime. Uh, the sound in itself is not bad, right? Uh, it's just that loop. Uh, someone has taken the liberty to mod the. Uh, this horn sound because it's it's on the likes of his uh, prototype uh, turbine units for Union Pacific that he released last year uh, and smooth that out and it, it sounds so much better so you know maybe if this thing got that treatment as well but but again you got to remember you can't always rely on modders you know this is something that's sold so it, it, it should kind of be decent from the get-go you know. Uh, let's see. Control plus Q is exterior sun visors. Uh, 
Come again? If I hit control Q, that wants to quit the game. The hell? Okay, that's not right. Control T equals skirts. Alright, so I'm assuming it's not control and it's shift maybe? Yep, so it's shift, not control. That's kind of cool. That's pretty neat. I like that. I like stuff like that on the fly. Being able to change stuff like that. Like in uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator. I'm very appreciative of stuff like that. So you can whip those out. That's pretty cool. So let's see what the exterior sun visors do here. So it's actually shift T and not control T. Shift Q. And there's your sun visors. Kind of come out of nowhere. That's pretty neat. That is pretty neat. Alright, let's see if we can shut this puppy down. See what it sounds like here. Get rid of that non stop air brake sound. Ooh, very old rolling stock sounds. This rolling stock, by the way, comes with the pack. Alright, let's fire it up here, see what happens. Uh huh. All right, that huge silence. <laughs> That's nothing, nothing great. Again, all right, reverser. Yeah, it's got some meat on it. Big boned. Let's see, oh, here's the headlights. Nice. Okay. Let's see. Let's see what this does here. If anything. Yeah, so see, you can change it. Okay, and then that way, if you keep it on dim, you don't have that crappy, you know, light casting thing going on. All right, let's uh, let's take off here. See what happens. So anyway, let's let's cover that real quick. We got a couple of cars behind us. This this rolling stock comes with. Um, whoop, getting away from us. We got a Logan Western Maryland, nothing groundbreaking, just kind of, you know, yard filler, if you will. Um, I feel like the wheels on a lot of the DTM rolling rolling stock wagons, freight cars, always look kind of weird. The proportion are kind of funky. Uh, but anyway, this is what you get, hopper, boxcar, gondola loaded. Whoa, what's going on? <laughs> Mouse got away from me. Look out. And the, uh, another hopper here. And, you know, they're... Let's just say these are like... The green beans in your steak dinner, if you know what I mean. So, what is that on there? Blood? This thing runs someone over? Cow, maybe? Alright, so let's see what this thing feels like. Because, you know, as much as I like looks and train sim, I think physics are extremely important as well. It seems to have that kind of like semi-realistic break to it. Now, we are sitting just outside of Hagerstown. Um, so we're on a slight grade here. So I don't I don't want the physics to fool me into thinking that it's not a slot car, you know. That sounds like a 567. It's that same, you know, OG 567 sound that uh, Train Sims had for quite a while. Can move the sun visors. God, that loop, man. Because you can't even, like, hit the space bar one time without hearing the loop. Ah! My ears! Dear Lord! 
That's that uh, that that DTM flange squeal. It's uh, it's on the strong side. I'm not saying flange squeal's bad. I've seen that argument. Uh, it's just it is overpowering. It's uh, it's pretty hardcore that flame squeal, but it's been on everything, so it's nothing new to this pack. But uh, you know, is it something that could be updated at some point? Absolutely, that would be welcomed. So the physics seem to feel okay. I mean, keep in mind we've only got a five-car consist behind us here. Brakes seem decent, not too overpowering. Like I said, it's kind of got that pseudo-advanced type scripting in it, if you will, whatever it's called. Alright, well, that's that. Let's see if I can actually fly back over here and get on this puppy. There we go. So here's your speed letter in number 81. Like I said, uh, he did receive uh, critique online and uh, fixed a few things, so that's nice. You know, that's, uh, that's good. It's a start, right? The, uh, these, these panels and the rivets, you know, it's not smoke box rivets, that's for sure. Those, you know, something like that could could definitely be touched up. That would add to it. But honestly, I first and foremost with any, uh, you know, the the latter DTM stuff, I'd I'd work on paint and uh, and texturing overall. I mean, the locos, um, they're not. I don't want to say terrible. They're not great. They're they're kind of like just under average it's just because it's so old and it's a lot of recycled stuff so it's it's hard to it's hard to get on board with that um but as always teach their own it's just my opinion what the hell do i know um but the uh the logo and the lettering and the numbers they look all right they seem to they seem to have gotten a little bit of help there uh, but anyway this is the uh the bl2 in the speed lettering all right, let's go check out these FA units. Now, he made these old FAs uh, ages ago, and I think the model is fairly old and from something else. Um, but anyway, they come with it. You know, it's, it's, it's extra stuff. Would I, would I take quality over quantity? Absolutely. Absolutely. But, uh, you know, again, if you want yard filler, there you go. Now, I never thought these looked bad, like model-wise, but you can tell, looking at the BL2s versus these, just looking down the side here, those BL2s are a step up. Like the logos, lettering, numberings, all right. Shiny, shiny, shiny. I'm I'm not really gonna mess with these because uh, you know they've been out for ages. Uh, these were just kind of added to this pack, so if you don't have these, then you know, go for it. We'll hop in one. See, it's got the same kind of like textured interior where it just looks like Microsoft, you know, spray paint just in a couple spots. It's just another color, basically.
Alright, if you want to see uh, a review on the old FA units, um, I'm sure there's plenty out there on YouTube. Not going to do those. Alright, GE44, this comes with it as well. The Fireball logo and lettering and numbering. It's the same old GE44. Uh, there's like 7.8 million of these things in the Steam store. Um, this thing is very old. Well, they changed the horn on it, but it's it's pretty garbage. It's a hot dumpster fire because whatever's going on with it, when you hit the space bar, nothing happens. I'm as we speak, I am literally tapping the space bar right now, and no sound is emitting. So it's it sounds like it's one of those things where you know the files got mixed up, and the end is the beginning, and the beginning's the end, and the middle is the end, and the end is the middle. You know what I mean? So there's something going on there. And then it kind of stops in the middle if you hold the keyboard, the space bar down. And same old DTM bell. So yeah, nothing, nothing new there. The old GE 44 tonna. And then of course the three cabooses, which you get in Western Maryland livery. Now, I thought we already had these from other developers under the moniker of High Iron for the uh, retro and heritage packs for the Hanover sub. But, uh... I... You know, again, it's like the green beans in your... your steak platter. You know, it's just... extra. They look alright, though. They look alright. I mean, you know, the thing about stuff like this is they have rivets, right? There's actual rivets there. Or at least they look like they are. You know, it's stuff like that that could be put on the locomotives that would, uh... This genuinely look like they're 3D. They're not, though. But you see what I'm talking about? Just the darkening of them makes them look 3D. I don't think there's anything new or groundbreaking in here. These are uh, reused cabooses, but cabooses are cool. And these honestly don't look bad. In, in terms of, like, the weathering and paint department, I think these look a hundred times better than the rolling stock. That is for sure. That's for sure. But uh, that's it, guys. That's what you get. The pack. The uh, DTM. BL2 pack in Western Maryland uh, liveries. Um, closing thoughts. I, f I feel like it's one of those things where DTM has taken a step up and a step back. And a step up and a step back. And I, f I feel like his last great pack, you know, me personally, I liked the uh, Union Pacific turbine prototype pack. I thought those were pretty darn decent. And then stuff afterwards, kind of, eh. Um, but this, you know, maybe it's a slight step back up, but I, I wouldn't say back at the level of the, the prototype turbine pack. Um, but, but that direction, if you know what I mean. Um, you know, they're, they're interesting locomotives. Um, there weren't very many, you know. They're, they're funky looking. Um, someone built them, you know. There's not a lot of people out there that tackle some of the older heritage stuff. It seems like we always get friggin' Jeevos and 4400s and, you know, GP40s and... All that. It's just the, the same rehash stuff time and time again uh, on the Steam store. So, you know, kudos to at least taking a stab at some of the older heritage rolling stock. But if just a, a little bit more attention to detail was taken in certain places, that would certainly be nice and uh, appreciated. Um, but, you know, they're, they're not bad. Um, 
I, I don't want to... I don't think of this as a review ever, just kind of a first look showing you in case you might be uh, interested in picking these up. So I don't I don't really want to put a number on it, but I'd, I'd say, you know, honestly, in, in terms of a lot of the recent DTM stuff, I'd say maybe like a six, uh, six and a half even. Because you do get quite a bit of stock, so if you don't have the FA units or a GE44, it's, you know, plus it's more stuff to, to put on the Hanover sub, so... And who knows, maybe somebody will make some mods, uh, you know, horn, engine, whatever. I I don't know how reskinning DTM stuff is because you never seem to see anyone reskinning it. Um, I'll go ahead and say good ones anyway, decent ones, ones that look nice. Um, but, you know, maybe... Maybe it could get some kind of love in that department too, but it's it's not bad. It's not terrible. It's not fantastic. Um, but uh, you know, that's just my thoughts on it. But um, DTM BL2 pack is on the Steam store. Go and grab it if you like. I will link it down below if you need to find out where it's at. But that's it, guys. That is all for this time and today. I'll see you next time, guys. Take care out there.